sweep away my pain bring your healing to my heart help me love once again cares and worries get me down fear of failure fills my day When I'm lost and all alone Help me Lord to find your way People knocking at my door Strangers seeking love and care Never let me turn them down Teach me gently how to share Children come into my life With your laughter and your song When will I become like them? Teach me Lord to sing alone Dear friends, okay, we will continue with the second servant song. Yesterday we saw to some extent the implications, the meanings and also the consequences of the mission given to the servant. The servant is called by God even before he is born and God has made him a capable instrument for the chosen purpose and that is why he said God made my mouth like a sharp sword and my tongue like a polished arrow. And therefore, the servant is enabled to fight against the enemy near and far. And the enemy is to be conquered by the word of God. And the word becomes a weapon for offense. He is to fight with the word. And that is the implication of saying, shaping the mouth like a sharp sword and like a polished arrow. Both the sharp sword and polished arrow can pierce wound the heart and mind of the listener. Not that there may be a thorough change brought about in him. And therefore, the servant is given the mission with this particular emphasis. That's what we have already seen. But even though the purpose is entrusted in this way and all the necessary conveniences are made and opportunities are given, the servant goes to the extent of complaining. I have labored in vain. And of course it means his preaching, the proclamation of the word of God was not at all effective. And 
we mentioned that this is in a way the nature of the people of God of Israel. And God himself has used about them four words which are very meaningful in this context. They are a stubborn people, a rebellious people, a hard-hearted people and a stiff-necked people. Practically all phrases convey the same idea. Therefore, because of their adamancy and because of their non-receptivity, the word of God has become ineffective in their life. And that is the reason why the servant makes the complaint to Yahweh saying, I have labored in vain. And now, as a continuation of the same, we can say, when the servant complains, I labored in vain, he also expresses the great conviction that he is always supported by God and he is the one who is there to hold on to Yahweh in strong faith, confidence and trust. And these words are clearly brought out here in the text. We read in verse 4 to 4 second part. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. Therefore these words reveal the great faith of the servant in Yahweh, in God. Even if my mission has failed, even if I feel that I have labored in vain, I know that I am protected by Yahweh and I am continuing my mission understood by Yahweh and I have great faith and trust in Him. And because of this faith and trust, the words of complaint does not become a blasphemy, but it becomes a beautiful prayer. And we know about it. It is a speciality of the biblical language of prayer. I may pour out my heart in frustration sometimes before God, but it is not actually challenging God or I am making a complaint that God has forsaken me. But on the other hand, it is an expression of one's own faith because at the same breath or at the same moment, the servant confesses, I have great trust, faith in Yahweh. And hence, his complaint is not a blasphemy, but a real prayer. Therefore, this is the consequence of his complaint in a way. Thus, he has made a complaint to Yahweh that he has labored in vain, but Yahweh makes that complaint even a beautiful prayer. And this is what is done by the servant. And after the servant has made such a complaint, expressing his great faith and trust in the Lord himself. Now, God 
is entrusting him with a new mission. The first mission given to him was to go and proclaim. And he did. But alas, there was no much use of it, use for it. And now, therefore, God is giving him a further mission. And thus we see, God is not finding fault with him for not accomplishing the task entrusted. But God is widening his mission or extending his mission. And that is very important. God is executing his own plan and not the servant's plan. And that is why God is proceeding further. And look at the words spoken in verse 5. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant. Therefore, here again, the servant is aware of the fact and he confesses it, that the call to be servant is coming from God. It is God's will, not his choice, but the choice and initiative of God himself. And now, this God has entrusted him the mission. And the early mission is narrated here once again. To bring Jacob back to him. And that Israel might be gathered to him. For I have honored in the sight of the Lord. And my God has become my strength. Therefore, the servant brings out once again his conviction what he was called for by this choices grace of God. God's initiative was in his favor to make him, to call him, to choose him and to make him his messenger to proclaim the message of salvation. He executed his God's plan, even though there was no much positive result. And now therefore God says to him, or God gives him a further mission. And he says, it is too late a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the servants of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach the end of the earth. Okay, here we see the servant is told by God himself. In a way, after his complaint, God is consoling him. The mission that I gave you first is not very big. It is practically a simple mission. It is too light a thing to bring back the lost tribes of ne Jacob or to gather together the remnant of the nation Israel. Actually, that was the work given to him. Now, God himself says that mission is a very minor mission compared to the big mission that you have now to execute. And therefore, you are not to be worried that you have failed. You failed in a minor mission. That doesn't mean anything. Okay, I am asking you or interesting you with a far wider and far greater mission. And what is the mission? I will give you as a light to the nation and my, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. We have already seen what is the meaning of being a light to the nations. In chapter 42, 
in the first servant song we saw that god said to the servant i give you as a covenant to the nation and a light to the nations a covenant to the people and there that means the covenant to the people of israel and light to all the nations of the earth the same is repeated here but there we don't find that word the covenant and therefore over and above the mission for the people of israel here is a far greater and wider mission to be the light of all the nations of the earth and it is this that the servant has to fulfill now therefore the meaning is clear this two lighted thing that you should try your best to bring back the lost tribes of israel lost tribes of jacob and to gather together the remnant of israel in short we can say to offer or to bring salvation for israel it is a silly thing compared to the wide mission you have to fulfill now and what is a wide mission bring salvation to all the nations of the earth and that is in another way you can say the universal mission thus in the second servant song we find that god is changing the nature of the mission very far ex- far wide and extensive and this is something very important compared to the first mission the second is a universal mission embracing all the people of the world and it is for that you are called god says to him therefore you are not at all to be worried about your failure in bringing back the people of israel and don't complain in other way we can say that you labored in vain your mission was never in vain it was a great success and what is the success the mission to take up the universal mission now therefore it is for this you are called god's initiative is just for that therefore you are not to be concerned or worried much about the failure that occurred in your first mission of converting or bringing back the people of israel that is not the important point look with a wider vision i look at all the nations of the world they all are to be saved salvation is to be brought to them and you should be the instrument for that and that is why god says to him don't say i have labored in vain god knows what you did and god knows the consequences of what it did and he is the one who is able to make it beneficial to the nations and therefore the word expressing the mission of the servant in the second song is very clear his mission acquires a universal character all worldly character therefore it is never again can be said that he is doing his mission just for the people of israel that is in a way irrelevant his mission is for the vast people of the earth or all the people of the earth the universality of salvation therefore this is the specific growth in the concept and also 
the realization of the mission of the second servant song. From a narrow mission to the tribe of Jacob, tribes of Jacob, now the mission becomes so extensive to be a light to all the nations of the world. And that is what you are to accomplish now. Therefore, no need of murmuring or complaining. You have failed in your mission. That is just the beginning of your new task. Therefore, it is in this way that we can understand. And it is said, therefore, the restoration of Jacob and the restoration of the remnant, it did not succeed. But a new task is being given. Since the old task is not successful, you need not think of that. Now think of the new task alone, the universality of the mission. And now it will be said, In verse 5, the mission was a rather restricted mission or the first mission. It was restricted. But verse 6, it is made very elaborate. <coughs> and that is why it is said to raise up the tribes of to Okay, in verse 6, it affirms the new task from the exile to restore them. And that is what we can say. And to restore the survives of Israel. And that is the first task. But more than that, the universal salvation is aimed at. Okay, further it is said, he is called to be a light to the nations. And therefore we can see he is the servant is supposed to be the universal savior. And the mission of the servant is universal in nature. Therefore that is what we find here. And when the universal mission is given it is not just enough that the servant goes and proclaims the message or the word of God. But he should proclaim it in such a way that the salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Even to the farthest country, salvation should be made available. Therefore, here it is a very big change the scope of the mission we can say and that is why it is said it is not merely to proclaim that was the task in the first mission but here something more is needed to bring salvation to the ends of the earth okay how does salvation occur salvation occurs by proclamation of the word, but not by that alone. The word that the prophet speaks is to be accepted, acknowledged, and assimilated by the one who hears it. And when one assimilates the word, one becomes ready to accept God's command. And when one is ready to God's, accept God's commandments, he will be saved. Therefore, it is not just for the proclamation that the servant is sent here, but to bring concrete salvation to the ends of the earth. And therefore we can see the mission is extended. The scope 
is extended and in the second level the servant will surely succeed and that is implication and therefore i will give you as a light to the nations and when you become a light it is in this light that others can see god and his qualities and they can come to realize god and that is how you are supposed to be a light and then when you proclaim the word it should be done in such a way that he receives and acknowledges the savior the creator the redeemer and when that occurs they are ready to accept the great reality of salvation and thus we see god gives him a new mission and this new mission means proclaim and proclaim the word of god to the ends of the earth and in such a way that salvation may reach all the nations therefore it is not merely the proclamation that is sufficient but all the people should accept yahweh his supremacy his commandments and acknowledge him as god and savior and actually the mission will be successful and then only we can say that the servant is really a light for the nations of the world and that is the nature of the universal mission he is interested with and again we see the concept that we found in chapter 42 is repeated here in verse 8 the sasta law in a time of favor i have answered you on a day of salvation i have helped you i have kept you and given you as a covenant to the people to establish the land to apportion the desolate heritages saying to the prisoners come out to those who are in darkness show yourself they shall feed along the ways for all the bare heights shall be their pasture they shall not hunger or thirst neither scorching wind nor sun shall strike them down for he who has pity on them will lead them and by springs of water will guide them and here we see the great mission given to him is again hinted at here i have kept you and given you as a covenant to the people therefore the same nature of the covenant relationship is mentioned here i have made you a covenant covenant would naturally imply the covenantal victim too a victim means to be sacrificed therefore the implication is clear your call is to be a covenantal victim to die for the people for whom you stand and if you are ready for that then naturally your future will be glorious because you will be fulfilling the will of your creator yahweh and therefore it is said i have given you as a covenant and it is just not that then when you are set as a covenant and also as a light to the nations what are you supposed to do you bring out the positive from all kinds of negatives and that is what is said okay you say to the prisoners 
come out into the light then feed those who are hungry and then nobody shall hunger and thirst and the reason for who has pity on them will lead them and pity would mean chesed the hebrew word is that and of course we know it is the compassionate love of god therefore yahweh will have compassionate love on you and as a result you will be enabled to bring out these uh, positive achievements in spite of the negative background and that is what is said here and further we read in verse 14 but sign said the lord has forsaken me my lord has forgotten me and now it is said jerusalem is weeping at its pathetic situation saying or lamenting god has forgotten us god has abandoned us and now look at the great consoling words the lord speaks to them and what is his reply can a woman forget her nursing child or show no compassion for the child of her womb even these may forget yet i will not forget you what a compassionate words are spoken the mother may forget a child of her own but god will not forget he will be always extending his love and mercy to them and that is what is said and therefore even if the mother forgets i will not forget you and see again it is said i have inscribed you on the palms of my hands we know when something is written on our palm we can see it directly before our eyes and nobody else may see it but the one who has to see can see and not only that when it is written on the palm it is so close to the eyes it refers to the protection offered and promised by god and the consoling fact is that your names my name is written on the palm of god and that means god has written our names on his palm and how can then he forget impossible and therefore what a consolation these words bring we can very clearly see and that is what we can very well understand here god has written our names on his palms and he will never forget it and therefore this is what he offers and we find again in verse 23 those who wait for me shall not be put to shame and therefore it is clear that god will protect us and will safeguard us and those who trust in him those who hope in him will never be put to shame and therefore what god has promised is very clear and therefore the second servant song brings into our attention the focus of universal salvation and not only that the consolation the protection and the salvation offered by god and the two comparisons even if the mother forgets a child the children of her own womb i will never forget you and i will never allow you to be put to shame if you trust in me the consoling words of god are so wonderful so meaningful therefore let us accept these words into our hearts and then naturally we will be able to understand 
the depth of the meaning of these words implied in the second song. Okay, now we are winding up this session. And as I said earlier, kindly go through this test as we go through our reflections. Okay, thank you. Loving God, we thank you for the blessing of reading your word together. We ask that these words of life, truth and hope would continue to impact us in the days ahead. May your love and grace follow each of us, refreshed and blessed by you. Amen.